So what did you just see? Well, you saw evidence of subatomic particles that aren't just electrons, protons and neutrons. You saw the interaction of muons that are showering down through us because of the cosmic ray bombardment of our atmosphere. But how did I detect it? Well, this is a cloud chamber that I've made. And as you keep watching, I'll show you how to make it yourself. And the beauty about this particular cloud chamber is that it doesn't need dry ice. Now, before we start, can you tell me what's the connection of my shirt to the cloud chamber? If you know, put a comment down below. And remember, press the subscribe button so that you keep up to date with all my latest videos. So let's start. Well, in essence, what is a cloud chamber? Well, a cloud chamber is an area where you have a gas that is at the tipping point of becoming a liquid. We say it's saturated. So any minor disturbance will cause it suddenly to become a liquid, which means if that disturbance is a charged particle and as it travels through that saturated gas, it's gonna produce tiny, tiny little droplets in its wake. And as a result, it'll show its evidence because of those droplets being forming as that particle races through that saturated gas. Now, the first cloud chamber made by Wilson actually used saturated water. But in many cloud chambers these days, they use alcohol or specifically either 100% or high percentage of ethanol or high percentage of isopropanol. Now, isopropanol is another type of alcohol. It's common referred to as a rubbing alcohol, but you need to make sure that if you want to do this, you need a high grade of it. So above 90%. Most cloud chambers, however, often use dry ice because you need that differential so that the gas of alcohol vapor basically can go to a level where it's saturated and stays in its gaseous state until it's disturbed. And so you have dry ice down the bottom and at the bulb you have alcohol that is constantly evaporating in its vapor at room temperature. But dry ice is not exactly an easy substance to work with. It's easy to come by, but of course it sublimates and disappears and you have to order it. So this particular cloud chamber, which I'm gonna show you how to make, uses simply hot water and something that's very cold. At the base, I've got this metal plate and this metal plate is basically a large heat sink that I've actually put in the freezer and filled with gel. More about that later. And so we've got around minus 18 degrees down the bottom. In the middle here, I have some felt that is soaked with isopropanol. And above here is a container which contains water around 60 degrees or so, which means my alcohol vaporizes really quickly. As it fills this chamber, the bottom end being cool now becomes very saturated. And as a result, if the muons are passing through there or any other charged particle, they'll disturb it, produce nucleation sites. And as a result, you'll see the trails, which you just saw. So that's basically what this cloud chamber is. And the beauty about this is, is that this base is refreezable. So you can use it again and again and again. Now, before I show you how to make it, I will give credit. This is not my own idea. I actually got this from a paper from a Japanese researcher, and I'll put the link in the description below. Now, I will produce another video on the cloud chamber its history and its importance in physics discoveries and also how you can recognize the various tracks that we have here. So what do you need in order to make your own cloud chamber without using dry ice? Well, the first thing you need is a heat sink. Now a heat sink basically draws heat away and this particular one is a fairly large one. Now the size that you need doesn't need to be this size. You can have a smaller one, but obviously this will determine the size of your cloud chamber. And I purchased this for about $40. The second thing that you will need is to fill this heat sink and that you'll need basically some of this gel. Now this is the gel that you can purchase in order, for example, if you have injuries and these are reusable gels. So in other words, you can heat them, you can cool them and obviously take them out if you have injuries. But we're gonna actually use the gel because one of the features of the gel is that it has a freezing point of minus 18 degrees Celsius, which is usually the temperature of your own freezer. And of course, being a solid and then for a liquid, it's going to maintain that temperature for a fairly long time. The next thing you need is this tape. Now this is aluminium tape, and the aluminium tape is usually found in suppliers for places for ducting and so forth, so you need good conductivity. So I bought this online, but I'm sure some good hardware stores will sell you this aluminium stuff. Try to avoid the stuff that is, let's say, cloth-based. This is actually straight aluminium sheet uh, with adhesive on it. 
and associated with that also is some double-sided tape. Now what about the chain bell? Well in my case I've purchased these from a local department store. Uh, again these are fairly large and obviously I've chosen this because I want a fairly large cloud chamber and, and they were going to be our upper and our lower chamber. Our upper chamber for our hot water and a lower chamber for our observation. Now obviously we don't need the lids so we can get rid of the lids. All you need are just the containers like so. You also will need something for this heat sink to sit on and I've got some old piece of styrofoam. It doesn't need to be styrofoam but again as this obviously you want to maintain at that minus 18 degrees you want it to be insulated from let's say where you're sitting it on. You will also need a light and I've bought this fairly cheaply from an electronics store for $10 and it's a nice bright light. Then you will also need some felt and then finally what you'll need is, in this case, I use isopropanol. Now isopropanol is basically a form of alcohol. Uh, you can also use ethanol, but the important thing here is, is that you use fairly pure stuff. So in this case, this is pure 100% isopropanol. Anything above 90% is good, but try to avoid the isopropanol that you buy in chemists that is like you're rubbing alcohol because usually the percentage is 60% or lower and you're not going to get the tracks that you need. So it needs to be fairly pure and uh, pure ethanol is a good thing as well, but isopropanol is actually a little bit cheaper to purchase. So let's start making it. So in order to make our base, we need to fill this with our gel. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that the edges are sealed up. And the best way to do that is use your aluminium tape. So I'm going to cut various sections of my aluminium tape. I, you don't need to necessarily be extremely rough, but in this case, I'm going to put them for all four sides, not just the two sides. And what I'm going to do is make a container. So I'm going to place this on its edge and then going to put it around the edges like so. So now you can see I've basically raised the edges so I can put in my gel in here without actually going everywhere. So that's the next stage basically to fill this with gel. Um, I'm going to just squeeze it straight out of the corner here, but if you wanted to, you could use a large plastic syringe. What you want to do is you want to make sure you don't have many air bubbles as you squeeze the gel in. You want to basically ensure that all the fins basically are filled in between with the gel. So as you can see, I've filled it up pretty well and most of my bag actually went into there as well. So you just got to basically ensure you force it down into the grooves. Of course, now we just need to fold this down like so. And then the last thing we need to do is again, take our aluminium tape and put strips across it so the whole thing is nicely sealed. And there is the finished product. So you have a nice black surface, of course. This is going to be where we're going to place our cloud chamber. It's going to be really cold. Of course, it's nicely sealed up and that's finished. All you need to do with that is now put that into the freezer and obviously leave it to freeze overnight. So now let's talk about the chamber. Now the chamber, of course, this is a finished one here. And this of course is where we're going to observe our particles and here is going to go through warm water. We're going to need to make that. And so again, you start off with two containers. Again, they don't need to be these sizes. They can be smaller. You can use plastic cups as long as they're sort of the um, Perspex uh, polycarbonate type cl plastic cups. You don't want them to be too flimsy. And certainly you don't want any of the corrugations around uh, because that will limit your visibility. So in this case, I got some plastic containers and again, as long as they're nice and firm and clear, I think surf flat surfaces are better because you don't have any distortions of light, then they'll be fine. Now, the need two containers, and they're going to eventually sit on like this, but we want to make sure that there is very minimal plastic between the top container and the bottom container. Now, I'm not going to cut the base out of this one because ultimately this is going to hold hot water and I certainly want that completely sealed. So I will have this container here. 
Now, we'll need to cut a hole out of here. Now, because these containers have exactly the same shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to cut around the outside edge. And that means this particular edge will fit in nice and snug into that hole. You will see that it will actually improve our construction. So now we have a hole. Now you can see it's quite rough here, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to basically cover this all up anyway, and this does not need to be perfectly sealed. As you can see, this container sits nicely on top of it, and it's gonna be obviously sealed by this. Now, the next thing we need to do is cover this with aluminium tape. Again, what we want is that the hot water above it, its thermal energy transfers really easily to the felt that's below it so that the alcohol will start to vaporize really quickly. So in order to do that, again, we get our aluminium tape. And as we put our aluminium tape on, the important thing is, is that the underside is still sticky. And of course, that's the place where we're gonna stick our felt. So now this is quite rough and ready. It's still sticky down the bottom. And now what we want to do is to place three layers of felt. Now with the magic of double-sided tape, I've already prepared some felt and cut it up into a size. It's roughly the size of the base here and use the double-sided tape to join three layers there. And all you need to do is just place it down here. And of course it will stick quite nicely. Flip it back over. And now what we're going to do is I am going to again, stick some double-sided tape here like so. And the reason I'm going to do that is we're going to now take this container over here and I'm going to put this on the bottom like so and put this like on top. And of course I made sure that the size here was around the other side. I can probably push it down a tad so it actually sort of fits snug. Remember the aluminium tape will bend a little bit and I'm going to piece basically press this down so that we've got good contact with the aluminium tape with the base of the bottom container. Now that of course won't stick forever. The last thing you need to do is to put a strip of aluminium tape around the edge to hold it all together. So there is your final cloud chamber and of course the plate, which of course will come straight out of the freezer. And of course that will give you about 20 minutes of viewing time. A couple of tips, first of all, when storing this, be careful how you store it. It's not glass. And so although it's a little bit more robust and not going to shatter on you, it does scratch easier. So be very careful with how you store it so that you reduce the amount of scratches that might appear. A hairdryer or a low power heat gun over the plastic could take small blemishes away, but you're going to be careful that you don't uh, distort the plastic. Secondly, uh, make sure that this is nice and smooth. Uh, in other words, you don't want ice crystals all over it. So basically use it as soon as you take it out of the freezer because any water that falls on it will pretty much freeze on contact. Uh, a little bead of Vaseline of, of some sort to stop any leakage of the alcohol is also recommended. Now you don't need to use a radioactive source that you purchase. Uh, you can simply sit it here and uh, see any activity from the high energy particles that are coming from above us, particularly muons, um, as they shower down. And if you place this, let's say on a higher altitude, you're gonna get a higher result. There's more muon uh, interactions at higher altitudes. But if you want a radioactive source, yes, you could pilfer your smoke alarm, but you can also get a thorium rod. A thorium rod is a welding rod and basically tool st uh, stores will have a thorium rod that you could use. Though you would have to actually break it simply because obviously the large rod won't fit under this particular cloud chamber. Lastly, the light source. In this case, you could have a light source that is simply a light source like this, but a side uh, sort of bar light source is better because you can place it on the side and then see the interactions as they go. So how do we make it work? Well, I have my plate here, which has already been in the freezer, so it's nice and cold, minus 18 degrees Celsius. The next thing you need to do is take your container and you need to prime it with your isopropanol fairly liberally, so maybe 10, 15 mils or so. And so what we're going to now do, and I've already put a little beading of Vaseline on the edges, is place it onto the plate like so. The last thing you need to do is add some 
warm water. Now 60 degrees is good, so this is probably a little bit hotter, so it's nice and warm. And the whole idea in this case is my alcohol starting to vaporize, and all we now need to do is wait. So I'm going to put my light on, on the side like so, and we're going to obviously now need to just to turn the lights off. And now we just need to wait. It takes a few minutes for this to prime. You'll find this sort of rainy effect going on as the alcohol vapor starts to become more saturated at the lower level. But wait long enough, you should see tracks in about four or five minutes, and then you should have enough vapor there to basically observe this for up to 20 minutes. Well, I hope that has helped you and hope you have some success in making your own cloud chamber. Please put a comment down below if you've had a go at it and succeeded especially. My name is Paul from Fixisic. Hi, if you particularly like this video, why don't you buy me a coffee? There's a link in the description below to help support my channel and the work that I do. And of course, remember to, to press the subscribe button so that you get my latest updates. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye-bye.